today's video we're going to be taking a tour of a permanent uh, hunting blind. We call it the hex. We call it the hex because it has six sides. Um, I built this blind with a great buddy of mine, a mentor of mine, Brett Morbitz. I'll mention him several times in the video. I'll, I'll link to his channel below. And you know, we did this video kind of as a prototype for some of his builds and the time we spent together and the time I was able to learn from him was priceless in my opinion. I'm going to give you a tour today as well as some reflection after sitting in it a few times. Some things I want to do differently. I might even try to rotate the windows. Um, I'll give you a tour of the outside and you know as always as you watch these videos please uh, feel free to comment, ask questions, share these videos with others. You know we're a community and I appreciate your viewership and your support. So enjoy today's video. Thank you. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna tour um, the inside of my hexagon blind. I'm gonna talk about some upgrades, um, some changes I'd like to make, some things I've learned. And the first thing I wanna tell you is that I built this blind with Brett Morvitz and I will link um, his blind builds into the description to this video because he's the guru. And one of the things that we did is um, we agreed to make the blind together so I could be kind of the guinea pig and we could learn. Um, since I'm panning to this window right here, if you look in the background, you'll see a trail the trail is right there and one of the videos I'm going to produce is about you know cutting trails to try and steer deer movement this is a clear cut it was popples primarily and I cut them I had them cut all of them and it is thick so I figured I could get them to use that trail by providing them a path of least resistance so I'm going to talk about switching these windows because they're too big. It was a learning experience. These are like 36 inch windows. I'll check. I hope they're square because one of my ideas is to actually change these from uh, vertical sliders to horizontal or whatever, maybe the other way around. Um, I know that's what they're not intended for, but they're too big and um, we just need to be able to see for gun season. I, I wanted to use a stand for both bow and gun, and I just don't see that happening except for maybe out of this window. Um, you know, you build a blind, if you don't build it on site, you don't know um, where to put the windows or how the windows are gonna set. So that's another uh, video idea of me is that I'm gonna try to make a blind and then cut the windows on site. Um, you pan over here, you'll see some bur oaks and then down in the bottom there's a food plot and I do have a bow stand right there in that bur oak and I've been hesitant to cut this brush this out but probably just going to make this be a gun stand because um, that stand is um, on the north end of my property and you're pretty dang exposed so maybe I'll come up with something else so here's a second um, shot of out of the hexagon this is um, facing the creek bottom and also facing the road so i will have a series of videos about um, trying to block off views from the road and the the road is in the for or background of this video and so this bottom field attracts deer quite a bit it attracts a lot of people looking for deer which i know is totally okay and then um i'm gonna just try to make it a little bit a little bit more private and provide the deer more cover. Now, this window right here, this is facing the buildings. You can see the burlap over the top of it and the chair. Um, I might actually just take this window out. Another video I'm gonna try to do is to show you ways or explain ways or come up with ways to enjoy it with your family, land with your family. So I have a fire ring down there and it's a great place where the family and I or whoever um, just enjoys the fact that we're blessed to own this. You can kind of see the buildings in the um, driveway in the background. So this blind is here because of easy access and it is also a very good spot. I'm going to pan back the other way. So this would be panning west right now, west to south, and you can get an idea. Now this spring, um, I'm in a CSP program and I'll be planting this with bur oaks 
and Swamp Oaks. Now we're going from the buildings over to that'd be the northeast. This, this window has been completely burlapped over for cover, even though there's actually a pretty good deer movement over here. So I don't know if my dad or the boys burlap this window over, but I would probably um, have a view um, over out of this window on the right side and then just burlap the left. So this window will probably stay, and if, there, if, if these windows are able to be flipped, I might leave this one for a second bow shot. Now I'm panning from the window uh, with the burlap that I would maybe leave as a bow window over to the door, and I wanna touch on some things that you learn. And what you do is you sit in your blind and you're like, why is this the way that it is? And for the life of me, I can't figure out why I didn't paint this door black. Um, in fact, I'm out here hunting, it's the holiday hunt, and I was literally humming it myself, painted black by the Rolling Stones. That's kind of how my brain works. So painting this door black is a definite must, and I am gonna do a video post upgrades, you know, um, probably two because I'm not gonna change the windows till the spring. Second video, our second upgrade would be the floor. You need to follow Brett Morbitz in his videos on his permanent builds, and he cuts his carpet to perfect size. You know, so he builds his blinds, cuts the carpet around his corners, and then um, it, it just fits in perfectly, but you can still take it out. I'm gonna make curtains out of an old um, ground blind that blew down with magnets, and that's gonna happen yet this fall, so I'll probably make a video to that, hopefully link it in the description. And then office chairs, are an absolute no-brainer must and we didn't have them in here before this blind is plenty big and so definitely room for two this is a family favorite for my father-in-law and my youngest boy now the only thing is I could not figure out how to raise these and adjustable office chairs are a must I'm a tall guy and these are too low for me that's why I have my Angry Birds blanket over the top um, I might actually put carpet or I mean under the carpet I might actually put um, cardboard first and now I want to talk about a little taboo thing here you know I don't understand why someone would search permanent blind video if they don't believe in them so yes I have a heater and yes I'm going to use this heater sometimes because it's a big dog and then this one sometimes I want my kids I want my father-in-law I want everybody comfortable along with that um, I am going to try to figure out a way to put a fan up here in the pitch of the roof because this does hold a lot of heat. So solar fan, something like that, that just runs quietly and kicks the heat down. You know, they make those stove top fans. That could be a solution somehow. I doubt that I'm close enough to the heat source, but I'm going to figure some way out to push the heat back down. You know, these windows do fog up. Um, again, on Brett's channel, he talks about some ways to get them not to fog up. Um, and another thing I plan on doing is explaining different things you should keep in your blind all the time and that'll be its own video and right now we have push pins for uh, window treatments I say window treatments loosely and i'm going to make a little container with maybe a squeegee um, some paper towels some different things to go above the door because you really can't tell the depth there but that's perfect little shelf and probably build a couple shelves too. Right, so here's a tour of the outside of the hex. Um, that's my paint job. I, I'm gonna improve on those. My father built this ladder. One of the things that my father-in-law has asked for as an improvement would be a landing as this door does swing in. I might do that, but we have to provide access for the field. So this is your main hunting area. There's a food plot down below the main field, which is brassicas and uh, winter wheat, oats and peas. There's a soybean field this year. And then here's the clear cut that was popples. And again, there'll be videos on whether you should log and the answer is an astounding definite yes. So another thing that I'm doing is I'm planting all kinds of trees, um, protecting them while they're little and trying to get more cover around the ground blind and also cover for access so there's all kinds of trees planted along this line some are bur oaks some are swamp oaks some are 
of course pines and then a bunch of popples were volunteer and I've planted oh and of course box elder so I've planted them all over the stand trying to break up its outline in, in hopes I have to brush this out someday here's the creek bottom also provides some great shots you can see some tree tubes in the background and then my front field which I'll have again a video series about how to screen that off from the road and then I am trying to create a funnel uh, right below where the buildings are now another eventually those buildings will be gone uh, and this will be more natural setting you know this was obviously a pasture at some time and again this summer I'm going to be planting uh, swamp oaks down here there's a view of the blind from uh, looking to the north so the blinds facing south again more trees probably box elder and whatever volunteered itself and then you kind of get a sense of how it drops off now the blind itself was built separate and then put on a platform um, it's about eight feet off the ground and this is eight feet because that was a max reach for a skid steer looks like I left the window open <laughs> have to go up there and shut it this is the base of the hexagon and I'm just pointing out that I paint all my bases and another thing that's probably a no-brainer for most people with common sense is to paint the wood before you install it I didn't do that I will let this brush up and I will have trees eventually to break up the outline you know some people use tank netting I just don't want to deal with something that's gonna get blown away and ripped up in the wind um, this blind is secured with cables that are attached to t-posts that I drilled a hole into them and pounded the t-post tight way into the ground and there's five or six of these uh, again just to secure the blind and then even one uh, coming straight down from the inside which I don't think you can see I do have five four by four posts four to make the corners of the frame and then one more in the middle that are dug in below the frost line Here's just one more look at her um, as we're walking out, um, just to kind of get a full scale of what it looks like. Don't like the white window trim either, but remember deer color blind. And this window is the one that has the burlap over it. So it looks effective, but it's not super effective if you can see the outline of the chair. So you'd see movement in there pretty easy. So curtains are probably a better idea. I hope you liked today's video of the hexagon tour. Um, I do have big plans for it and I do plan on showing you another video with some of the upgrades, maybe even two because I'm going to get kind of anxious, you know, to do some of the things like paint the door and make the curtains and I'd like to show you that process and the carpet too and then I'll have to wait on some things like trying to flip the windows. So thank you for watching today and thank you for supporting my channel.